Good morning. <clears throat> I apologize in advance for the cough. Um, Everyone's got it. Then I take back the apology. Uh, a few things to start with. First, um, there was a session of the uh, UN Security Council yesterday on Venezuela. The United States presented a resolution which got the requisite nine votes for passage, but was then uh, vetoed by Russia and China. Uh, the Russians put in a resolution which got four votes, which I would call uh, pathetic. And I think the results in the council demonstrate that there is very broad international support uh, for democracy in Venezuela and for uh, the National Assembly and uh, interim president Guaido. Uh, <clears throat> secondly, an announcement. Uh, the United States has imposed new visa restrictions on individuals responsible for undermining Venezuela's democracy. Uh, we are applying this policy to numerous Maduro-aligned officials and their families. Maduro supporters that uh, abuse or violate human rights, steal from the Venezuelan people, or undermine Venezuela's democracy are not welcome in the United States. Neither are their family members who enjoy a privileged lifestyle at the expense of the liberty and prosperity of millions of Venezuelans. The United States will continue to take appropriate action against Maduro and the corrupt actors and human rights violators and abusers who surround him. The United States urges all nations to step up economic pressure on Maduro and his corrupt associates, as well as uh, restrict visas for his inner circle. Now is the time to act in support of democracy and in response to the desperate needs of the Venezuelan people. That's first. Second, uh, Treasury today um, announced additional sanctions. The United States also took action against six security officials of the illegitimate Maduro regime, individuals associated with the obstruction of the entry of international humanitarian aid into Venezuela, or violence against those who attempted to deliver the uh, assistance. Sanctions were imposed on uh, Richard Jesus Lopez, commanding general of the Venezuelan National Guard, Jesus Maria Mantilla, commander of the Strategic Integral Defense Region Guayana, Alberto Mirtiliano Bermudez, division general for the Integral Defense Zone in Bolivar State, Jose Leonardo Norono, Division General and Commander for the Integral Defense Zone in Tachira State, Jose Miguel Dominguez, Chief Commissioner of the FAES, the Special Forces in Tachira, and Cristiana Belardo Morales, the National Police Director. The United States and the international community continue to support the Venezuelan people as they strive to reclaim their democracy. We must support Interim President Juan Guaido's a presidency per the Venezuelan Constitution, the National Assembly, and the will of the Venezuelan people. The Treasury will have made that announcement uh, earlier this morning. <clears throat> okay, questions? Thank you. Uh, just on the yeah, visa re uh, can you give us a rough idea of how many, even if you can't name, I, um, name them? Uh, treading carefully here, dozens. Let me just say that. Okay, but and, but weren't, weren't there some that were already? Yes, yes. Guys? This is an addition. Um, so we, dozens more. Dozens more, and uh, we continue uh, to look at associates, close associates of uh, Maduro, uh, who, with their families, have visas to the United States. This is an ongoing process. Okay. And then, um, secondly, and. Uh, um, more importantly, I'm just I'm wondering, are, are you guys, meaning the administration, at all concerned that in the initial, for lack of a better word, excitement over Guaido and the recognition is is losing some momentum? And in give it, given that Maduro doesn't seem to be going anywhere, he's certainly not taking the national security advisor's advice to go sit on a beach outside of Venezuela, and. So are you concerned of that, that you're losing momentum? And, and then set, and related to that, there is one member of Congress in particular, a senator, who has you know, suggested that Maduro might meet the same fate as 
Qaddafi in Libya. And I, does that help or hurt your, your cause or your efforts to build momentum? I'm not uh, actually going to get into that and commenting on what uh, particular senators say. Forget it. Forget I, the line about any senator. I guess, do, do comparisons between Maduro and and suggesting that he might meet the fate of Gaddafi. Do that, does that help your cause? Or? I, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into that other than to say that I think that, that um, dictatorships come to an end. Some last for a very long time. Uh, others uh, a much shorter time. This one in Venezuela will also come to an end. We hope that it comes to an end quickly and peacefully. I'm not concerned about the loss of uh, momentum that some people allege. You, uh, you saw uh, Juan Guaido become uh, much more of an international figure in the last week than he had previously been. Uh, he'd not been very well known, but now he's been meeting with a series of Latin American presidents, our vice president. He's in <coughs> Brazil and Paraguay. Um, so uh, after visiting Bogota, uh, where there were several Latin American presidents, um, the, what underlies all this is not uh, anything the United States is doing. What, under, what underlies it is the desire of the Venezuelan people to escape from the condition of dictatorship and economic misery that they are suffering. And that has not diminished and isn't diminishing. Leslie? Um, hello, how are you? Um, how much diplomacy, how much effective diplomacy can you make when Russia and China continue to undermine your efforts? You probably saw today that the Russians have sent um, uh, wheat supplies to Maduro. Um, so and at this stage, it looks like sanctions is one of the only viable um, uh, pressure points that the US has. Um, so my second question after this one is, um, how uh, have you managed to get, and who is on board with adding sanctions um, against Maduro? So which countries? Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to make announcements on behalf of other countries. Of I think you will see uh, additional sanctions tied to the behavior of the regime. Uh, and if the regime engages in uh, additional, uh, particularly provocative acts, I think you'll see more international reactions. Clearly, the support of Russia and China uh, for the Maduro regime helps the regime. Um, I don't think you're going to see large amounts of additional money put in uh, by either Russia or China. Uh, but their, uh, their political support, their diplomatic support, uh, helps the regime. And we have made the argument, unsuccessfully to date, to both Russia and China um, that they're not helping themselves. That is, if their concern or to the degree their concern is about the recovery of monies they have lent or invested, uh, a bankrupt Venezuelan economy will never be able to repay those amounts. Only a Venezuela in recovery will be able to do so. And that's not going to happen under the Maduro regime. So you, you can't really, I mean, Maduro won't step down until you've got Russia and China stepping away. Well. Uh, I would say Maduro won't step down until the day he steps down, and that day will come. Okay. Can I just follow up on the, uh, on the issue of Russia, uh, the Russian announcement of, of wheat, of, of medical supplies? Uh, how does the U.S. feel about this? Could this be something significant? If the U.S. goal is to help the people of Venezuela, how do you feel about Russian aid? Going well, the problem uh, we have with various kinds of aid is where does it go? Uh, we know. <clears throat> very clearly that for years the regime has uh, corruptly sold some aid that's delivered and has used other portions of the aid uh, exclusively for supporters of the regime. In other words, it becomes a political weapon rather than a means of improving the life of uh, most Venezuelans. And I think it's fair to ask that question about any aid that's given to or through the regime. Uh, obviously, we, we are in favor of giving humanitarian assistance to Venezuela. We are not in favor of giving it to this corrupt regime. Yes, uh, 
I was wondering if you could share some more details about those uh, family members that are going to be sanctioned by the U.S. And second question, what the uh, Maduro regime is requesting in the conversations that are having with you or the U.S. administration? And uh, Foreign Minister Arreaza suggested uh, this week in, in Geneva uh, a potential meeting between Trump and Maduro. Is that an option for the U.S.? Um, <clears throat> I can't reveal much at all about the visa revocations. I am told by the lawyers that um, they're, according to their reading of the statute, we just can't do that. It's visa confidential information. I would be happy to do so if, uh, if we were permitted. We, um, we can't by law. Uh, I don't even know if I'm actually permitted to give the number, and I noticed that in the in the announcements the number is not there. I will ask uh, if we can if we can do that. Um, uh, conversations with the regime. Our conversations with the regime, the de facto uh, regime, are primarily about the safety of Americans. As I've noted here before, we have an embassy. Uh, we have. Uh, 12 Americans in prison in Venezuela. We have tens of thousands of American citizens in Venezuela. And the protection of all American citizens is at the top of our list of concerns. So in any situation like this, do you talk with the guys who have, who have the guns, who have the uh, power right now? Yes, to protect Americans. Um, I would, I guess, on the question of meetings that the president, meetings with the president, that really is a question for the White House. Michelle Kalman, NPR. Are you confident that Guaido will be able to go back into the country? Um, and what, if anything, is the U.S. doing about that? And, and just following up on the question of your meetings, did you have meetings with um, Maduro's representatives at the U.N. when you were there this week? No. The answer to the second question is no. Uh, the answer to the first question is that we, I think in many other countries, are um, very concerned about uh, interim President Guaido's ability to go back home, <clears throat> which he has a right to do as a Venezuelan citizen, and to go back home safely because a number of regime officials have actually threatened him uh, with arrest. Uh, we certainly hope that he is able to go home safely. We know that um, there are dozens and dozens of other governments who share that uh, concern. Uh, I think that if he were arrested on his return, you would see a very, a very large reaction on the part of the Venezuelan people and on the part of the international community. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Just to uh, follow up the question of my part, uh, of my colleague. Um, you can name, you can give us the number, you can give us the, the names, but they are already being expelled from the, from the United States, these family members. <coughs> this is the first question. And the second one will be, Venezuelan people was uh, expecting on the February 23rd that Maduro were overthrown. And because they thought that this uh, humanitarian aid will go into the country. What will be the next step? from the United States to put more pressure on the dictatorship? On the first question, <clears throat> we uh, take a look at visas and we revoke them. In some cases, people can be in the US. In other cases, they may be outside the US. That's not a primary consideration for us. Um, and you will find, uh, you won't find because uh, we can't give you the information, but there is a mix. Um, as to <clears throat> uh, next steps, well, you see some of the next steps. <clears throat> Pardon me. As to next steps, you see some of the next steps right now. You see visa revocations. You see additional sanctions. You see moves in the United Nations. We, haven't, we are having conversations with governments that have not yet acknowledged uh, Juan Guaido as the interim president, uh, urging them to do so. We have conversations with lots of governments about what efforts we in the international community, particularly the democratic community, uh, can take together to 
put additional pressure on the regime and to show additional support for the National Assembly, for Juan Guaido, and for the Venezuelan people. Dimitri? I wanted to know if you and the Russian, Russian diplomats, Russian officials are engaged in any direct, meaningful interactions, or you only trade accusations from podiums? I had a very nice conversation with the Russian ambassador to the UN yesterday prior to the uh, session and prior to his attacks. Um, yes, there are conversations, uh, uh, obviously, constantly between the United States and Russia on a variety of issues, including this one. You mean yourself? Including, you by, including by me, yes. Yeah. Nicole, CNN. Hi, thank you for joining us. Um, this morning or earlier today, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei, Sergei Lavrov suggested that he thinks the U.S. will intervene militarily, and he named you personally. Um, I'm going to read you what he said. Uh, Elliot Abrams. <laughs> Just escalates the situation that would provoke an explosion and bloodshed in Venezuela to justify military intervention as the U.S. wishes. So could you oh, please you respond? Know, <clears throat> I have known uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov for 15 years. Um, there was a time in the Bush administration when I was working on the Middle East. We had the Middle East Quartet, um, which I participated in, and he, the quartet was uh, US, EU, uh, UN, yes. Russia. Yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> and he is still foreign minister. So known him for quite a while. I don't uh, think he actually believes that we're attempting to, to do that. And I think, as you know, we are not attempting to do that. The United States is pursuing a policy of um, economic, financial, political, diplomatic pressure on the uh, de facto regime in Venezuela in support of Juan Guaido, the interim president, the National Assembly of the Venezuelan people. Um, we continue to say, and we always will, that all options are on the table because they always are. But I think anyone who actually looks at American policy uh, in Venezuela could not reach that conclusion. Uh, a bipartisan group of senators has introduced legislation that would uh, encourage granting of temporary protected status to Venezuelans in the United States. Is that part of the administration's considerations, conversations with lawmakers or others? Conversation, sure. I mean, when, when I have gone up on the Hill in the last few weeks, uh, that is a question that's uh, frequently raised, um, and it's something that obviously the administration has to talk about internally. Uh, there has been no decision. It will have to be considered not only here at state, but clearly by the Department of Homeland Security and ultimately the White House, but it is not something on which a decision has been made. Hi, Shana Stulen, I-24 News. Um, there was a tense exchange between you and Congresswoman Ilan Omer a couple of weeks ago. What do you think that was all about? And two, have you guys worked things out? Are you all good? <laughs> We've uh, not, not uh, engaged in further conversations. I really don't uh, know what that was all about. You would have to ask uh, the Congresswoman what her, um, what her intent was in that uh, colloquy. One last question, Abby. Um, thank you so much. Yesterday at the UN, you mentioned that if Maduro stayed in power, there could be five million people mm -hmm. <clears throat> who are fleeing Venezuela. Is there any push within the administration to take in more refugees from Venezuela, given those rather stark numbers? The the number comes. <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> You've got it too now. Get even back to me. The. Um, the number comes from a mathematical extrapolation. <clears throat> we um, generally about, there's a lot of movement, or there was, on the Colombian-Venezuelan border. We, the number was something like 5,000 people a day additionally going into Colombia. So just do the math. You would reach about 5 million at the end of calendar 2019. Um, on all of these questions regarding um, admissions to the United States, again, it's not just a State Department question, it's an administration question. It's one that, um, that we will have to talk about and talk to Congress about. The one thing that, that we have uh, done and continue to do is to make sure that in the places where most uh, Venezuelans go, Colombia, 
Peru, Brazil. We give more and more help, and we have every, I guess I'd say every week, been announcing additional amounts of assistance to help them uh, cope. And it, it's worth saying it, um, it's a real burden, as you can well imagine. Um, from the point of view of um, public schools, uh, taking in more and more children from the point of view of labor markets, from the point of view of food supplies, from the point of view of hospitals. It's a real burden, and it's one that uh, we should salute those neighboring countries uh, for undertaking. And we are trying to help them with uh, financial assistance to help defray these costs. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.